Hi everybody, welcome back to So Like Dotty at Forever Daisy Chain. Um, thank you for stopping by. If you're a subscriber, it's great to um, spend a little time with you again. And if it's your first time um, having a look at my channel, thank you for taking a peek today. My name is Alison um, and I'm just having a little weekly catch up and a couple of things that I've got planned. And yeah, I just thought it would be nice to stop by and spend a bit of time together. Um, so today I'm wearing um, a Tilly and the Buttons um, Lyra dress, which it's the second one of these that I've made. I'll pop a picture in of the first one that I made. Um, and I've made this one slightly differently. I'll drop a full length picture in. Um, as you can see, I've actually stitched this together and I was intending to just put some buttons on. Um, I don't need it to kind of fasten and unfasten. I didn't like... Um, I just felt like it was gaping a little bit, even though everything was lined up on the other one. I've added a ruffle down the side of here, which I really like. I think you can probably see that detail on there. This fabric is from, so this fabric is from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. I think it's still in stock at the moment and I've got both colourways in it and I really, really love it. Um, so this is kind of a maxi length version, as you can see from the photograph. And um, with the belt, um, I had this black belt from like a quite a cheap high street store had it for a little while it had sort of black um pvc coating on it um, and it's like a stretchy elastic belt with a buckle that just connects together um, and i'm not really a huge belt person normally but these dresses do suit me with a belt so um i just made sort of a big scrunchy tube and um, cut the other one off used the elastic, made a scrunchy tube and threaded it through and you can maybe see better if I stand up. I quite like how that, that looks so um, that's the belt that goes, goes with this dress. Um, so I mentioned about the other one and um, there's a bit of a story with it. I loved it, shared it, it's the yellow one with the flowers on um, and then kind of went to put it on again and when it was laid on the bed I realised that there was a a difference in the colour of the two front panels and I was just absolutely gutted and um, because I love for things that have flowers on I'd focused on the flowers and I'd not really realised that there was a leaf within print within the fabric and on some sections of the fabric the leaf was white and on some sections it was brown and it just meant that there was quite although none of the other colours were changed it meant that it looked lighter and darker and um, and I thought, oh, should I unpick this panel, which would have meant taking the collar off and redoing it all? And then um, should I make it into a skirt? Other people will say nobody would notice, but I noticed. And I did think actually when you looked at it, it was quite apparent. Anyway, I had a metre left, which still had the, it moved from the self edge was darker leaf to whiter leaf, then darker leaf. But in the whiter leaf, I have managed to cut out um, a front and back bodice for the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress, which I've only made once before. It was three sizes bigger than I am now. And I made it out of a duvet as sort of a bit of a test run and it just it was awful. It didn't suit me at all. Not that there's anything wrong with the pattern, it just didn't suit me. But I think now I've lost a little bit more weight. Um, I thought, well, I'm happy to give it a go and if not, I'll turn it into a skirt. So I managed to get it out of that. So I've rescued the sleeves out of the Lyra dress, the skirt out of the Lyra dress um, and I've got it all quite out and ready. That's probably the next thing that I'm going to do um, to turn the top into an indigo dress because I've got a belt that's ready to go and everything. So it'd be quite a quick um, make because I actually detached the skirt. I cut along the bodice so the gathers are all still in place and the same for the sleeve so it'd be quite quick to put those back together again so that's definitely on my list of things to do um, I did share on um, a couple of videos again my first saw Hayley Jane box and this was the fabric I think I talked at the time that I got it um, about making a Sabina skirt which is a free download but I think actually because there's two and a half meters of it <clears throat> I've settled on um, a dress I've done two of these before a Nina Lee Park Lane dress um, without the collar and um, this version here but probably with slightly longer sleeves and um, so I'm going to give that a go I did a crash course at my cousin's well it wasn't a crash course it was a couple of hours on invisible zips at my cousin's Lynn's house um, last week and um, so I feel much more confident about that now and although I've made this before it, the fabric had a stretch so I got away without putting a zip in so um, I'm quite comfortable to to give that a whirl so that's pending I'm not saying it's a March make, it probably will be, but it's pending, that one. And um, 
If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I've been going to some sessions every other Wednesday afternoon and yesterday was a full day at um, hashtag Sawtoon. Um, so I live north of the Tyne and um, Tamlin from Sawn on the Tyne has just got together um, like some sewing groups. Um, so if you're interested in getting involved, just go on Instagram and look for hashtag Sawtoon, uh, T-O-O-N. Um, as in the tune and um, you could come along and join us so this dress I actually started on Wednesday afternoon and then finished it when I was there yesterday and um, it's just lovely to get together with people have a bit of a natter kind of you know we've all got different skills so learn from each other get advice get thoughts and just chat with and meet some new people so I'm really enjoying enjoying that and um, we've also got like a bit of a swap exchange table and any money we raise from that is going to um through Tamlin to the Great North Air Ambulance so I picked up this double gauze yesterday um, it's been through the washing machine, ready to go. It's probably just over a meter of it. I think there might be enough to make a pair of pajama bottoms, like crop pajama bottoms, for myself. And it's lovely. Um, it's grey with like a gold speckle in it. Um, but the reason I grabbed this was because I've got some double gauze. I've got some mustard du double gauze that I want to make something with this year. I got it towards the end of the summer season last year, but I've never sewn with it before. So I thought, well, if I just make a pair of pajama bottoms, it'll give me a bit of a feel for how this works. I mean, there's enough that I could probably get a top, maybe a sagebrush or something like that out of it. I might do something like that, I'm not sure. But I thought it would be nice to have a play with it, see how it works. Um, and yeah, I just saw it yesterday and I thought, oh, yeah. And whoever's done it's obviously overlocked it before they've washed it and things as well. Because I, I think it frays, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I've never worked with it before. Um, but I do know that Rowan, the Yorkshire Soul Girl, has got a YouTube um, video that she shared recently about different makes with um, double gauze. So I might revisit that one and check that out before I make that. So I'm kind of noticing um, as I'm going through my fabric and I've got the fabrics in my stash that would blend in with this but I'm kind of going for tones of certain colours because the next one I got um, I wasn't particularly um, wanting to get any more fabric but I just could do with an additional plain t-shirt in my wardrobe and um, so I'm just kind of looking at those and they go lovely together there we go and um, so I just nipped along to first fabrics and got this it's a I think it's called a brushback jersey um, because I've made quite a few, um, like towards the end of la last year, well, all of last year, um, Billy jumper dresses, and then last year I did the jumpers, and I do love them, but they're quite high up. And as we're turning into sort of heading towards spring, I thought I could just do with a t shirt, but not um, as high up. So I think I'm going to make the Tabitha t shirt from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Um, and I just need to check to see if I need to do a bicep adjustment on the sleeves because I've made it once, but I can't remember which sleeves I use. Sometimes I drop the billy sleeves in. I don't particularly want it to be kind of gathered, but I'm just going to want to make a long sleeve t-shirt, um, but I wanted it slightly thicker than just a t-shirt fabric. And this is so soft um, on the inside. It's not, it's it's thick, but it's not massively thick, not like sweatshirt fabric. Um, but I just think that'll be absolutely gorgeous. Um, because I've got a few um, like crop denim trousers and things that I'll be kind of wearing soon. Um, I've got a denim skirt, different things that I think that that would go with. And years and years and years ago, when I think when I was a student midwife, I got my colours done. And um, I don't know whether it was, works. This is my natural hair colour, but it's a totally different hair colour to 30 plus years ago. But this was one of my colours, like a pale pink, baby pink, baby blue. Um, wear my colours which I was devastated at the time because I was a bit gothy and everything I wore was black so I didn't really want to wear baby pink and baby blue but hey ho it's a bit different now so they're kind of the fabrics and my thoughts really on what I'm going to be doing up before up here is my kind of my inspiration board so I've still got the Camden Nina Lee Camden skirt on there which I I've got some cord and I'm aiming to make that but I think given the time of year um, I probably won't make that in cord anymore got a dressing gown in the middle that I still keep saying I'm going to do for an Ira so they're still on my pending makes as well but I'm being a bit kind of less structured with it these days and going with the floor and um, so other things I've been doing I've been playing around with um sublimation still um let me just see if I can find something that I've been making so I've got some these are cricket coasters that I got and um, 
I think I mentioned that I was making prizes for my members. I'm just looking because I've got one made. Here it is, I think. So I've um, made these coasters, so I've been printing those. So I've just been playing around with a different design for a few more. So I've got some square ones of those to make. I'm not sure how well you'll see that. I, I, I'm happy with it, but I want the colours to come out a bit brighter than that. So um, just playing around with things like that, really. Um, and with bags and stuff still. And then in the cupboard that's directly behind me, um, it's the one that my Cricut machine used to be on downstairs. And it's a, um, a cupboard with an opening door. And in one side of it is a cut down... Um, trolley that you can get from Hobby Craft or Amazon where they've got all different plastic drawers so it's got like all my different vinyls and things in there and the the, the trolley didn't quite fit inside the cabinet so um, I don't know if I can move and kind of show you what that looks like on camera there we go and um, so this side just slides in and out with different things but this side wasn't quite big enough to fit the other part of the cabinet in and Carl was going to put me some shelves in there but um, you can buy to go into Calax units and things from Ikea. Sorry, I'll just do them a little. I'm like Hugh Grant in uh, Love Actually there. I've got the moves. Um, but in Ikea, you can buy something that goes into a Calax unit that's got the little, um, I don't know what you call them, little shelves for kind of card and paper. So I said to him, maybe if you could do something like that in there, that would work because A4 will go into the gap. Um, and I went to Ikea on my way home from somewhere the other day luckily it's only 15 minutes away from home and it said that they had five of these things in stock but when I got there the one of the ladies said it might show that we've got five but we've not got five and I thought well I'm pleased I didn't drive 40 mile round trip that I used to have to do to get here to find out you didn't have it however when I was in the um picture frame department just had a complete blank there I couldn't remember what they were called I turned around there was it was quite late in the day so um there were some boxes that were empty so there were cardboard boxes and they had these inserts in which are obviously where the frames go in and then as people pull them out these are kind of rubbish so i saw two and i thought oh well i just wonder if carl can do anything with them could he kind of put those into there and then just put some stiff cardboard because the stuff that i'm using is not heavy it might only have a couple of things of different labels in and um, so I asked the lady that was kind of sorting out that area and she said oh absolutely we want to recycle as much as possible so I've got some more of them if you'd like them and would you like some of the cardboard because it's quite stiff cardboard so I came on with a bit of that so Carl said at the back of the cupboard these ones will go in just as they are and um, but at the front he's if he needs to he's just going to kind of use it as i don't know some tool that he's got to snip these bits out and then the boards will rest or probably no nails glue them on and then i'll just be able to put my paper on the top so they're not going to cost me anything at all if they were and um, so i'm really pleased with that and she did she she said well, oh what is it you're going to store and i said sort of craft card or paper or labels and she said oh just if you're into crafting the other place that you would find things that might work for you and i thought it was worth a mention because people might do different crafts to me she said it's in the um sort of the plant pot and plant section because she said we end up with lots of cardboard inserts that have holes in there so if you say store jars or something like that they might be useful for you so i like a bit of a recycle so I'm, i'll i'll give you an update at some point when we've got those done i know Carl's got the no nails so hopefully that will be soon so yeah um i don't think i've got much else to tell you it's um a brief little get together today and um, I just wanted to stop by, have a little catch up and um, drop me a message in the comments. Let me know what you've been up to and hopefully we will all um, catch up again soon. Um, look forward to seeing your makes and um, I'll be back probably at the weekend with an update on mine. So thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to um, press the thumbs up and um, subscribe and press that little bell for notifications if you've not done that yet. And take care. Bye for now.